Welcome to our Caribbean and African Targeted Health Improvement Program, CAFIP Health Hour. The Caribbean and African Health Network, CAN, along with its national partners, are incredibly pleased to continue to bring to you targeted health and well-being education delivered by Caribbean and African doctors. These health hours are all about empowering, educating and giving space to black people so our communities can look after themselves better. Every Saturday, our black GPs or consultants present on those health and well-being topics that affect you, your family members and friends. Some weeks will vary and will include other panel members such as pharmacists, specialist nurses and faith leaders. Our health hours cover a range of topics and include mental health, heart health, women's health, reproductive and sexual health issues, men's health, respiratory problems, cancer, sickle cell and many more. We have not forgotten to include within our health hours the many societal, cultural, religious and racial challenges that can go hand in hand with health problems and influence how we should respond to meet health and well-being needs. The sessions are designed for you and we want you to use the time to listen, learn, share your experiences and ask questions to our black doctors. During every session we will gather your feedback so we can continue to respond to the needs of our black community. To request any particular topic, please email health at khan.org.uk. We encourage you to invite others to our Health Hour sessions. Spread the word in our community. CATHIP is funded by the National Lottery Community Fund. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's really nice to have you all here this morning. You're all welcome to our health hour for today. And um, it's going to be an exciting one and very um, educative and interactive because we'll be having with us here, Dr. Karen, who will be talking about um, menopause. Um, I know we've done something like this before now, but we'll be having more discussion on this today. And um, before we go on with this today, I would like to give you an update on some of our events and activities in CAN. The slide, please. Can I have the slide, please? Yeah, I'll put it up in a second. I was just going to say, we've got Karen on the call already. Oh, okay. So we can do the announcements at the end. So we can, yeah, introduce Dr. Patrice. Okay, so that's fine. Natasha, you're on mute. I have two screens, very techy person. So apologies for that. As my colleague Annabelle just said, we uh, you are very welcome, all of you, to join us in our Katip Health Hour. Um, we are really thrilled to, to have you join us in this wonderful session. Uh, today we will explore the insightful topic of thriving through the menopause, doing it the natural way. So we'll explore everything about natural uh, methods of care and how to deal with your day-to-day -day through, through better pause. Uh, so before we begin, I would like to acknowledge, uh, as always, and thank you for our valued partners, Rafa International Agency, uh, Croydon BME, uh, Enfield Caribbean Association, the Royal Assembly Sheffield, uh, RCCG's Church, um, the Black Health Initiative, and obviously um, all of our team at Cannes. So uh, the collaboration of our partners has been instrumental uh, in making the most of, of this event and has been throughout the journey of Health Hour. So uh, let's make the most of today. Please interact in the chat, make questions. Um, our, uh, our guest speaker will be able to answer questions at the end of this uh, session. Um, as well as we can exchange ideas in the chat. And also please interact with us on our social media platforms. So that's enough of me <laughs> for now. So I just wanted to really present um, our special host today, Dr. Patrice Archer, uh, and I'll pass it on to you. Okay, thank you very much. 
Hi, I'm uh, Patrice Arthur. I'm a specialty doctor in Ox and Gynae. So this topic is definitely uh, something I'm interested in and I'm excited to hear our speaker, Ms. Karen Jouash. Uh, she's a consultant in obstetrics and gynecology at Imperial College in London. And this is not just a topic on menopausal symptoms, but is a holistic approach to managing uh, menopausal symptoms. So I'm delighted to hand over to Ms. Jouash. Thank you. Hello, hi everybody, how are you? Um, so just welcome to this um, sort of deep dive into really understanding the menopause and how it affects us. Um, I just would like you all to post into the chat um, to just consider why are you here today? What made you come to this webinar? It's really important to reflect um, why we come to certain things. So it allows us to really um, sort of um, enjoy and really set our health goals as we enter into this session. Brilliant. So... I'm just going to do that. So I hope you can all see my slides now. Is that okay? I'm just going to turn my video off. So really, what is the menopause? Um, so the menopause is a time when our menstruation pauses, simply. Um, it can be defined as a time when your periods completely stop but it's a natural process. And it's really important for us to recognize that because there's so much stuff in the, in the press and in the media that is almost touting it as if it's an unnatural process which needs to be medicalized and that's not the case. It marks a time when a woman's periods finally stop or when the ovaries kind of run out of eggs, stop producing eggs or, or do that intermittently. And menopause just simply means the last period. So we know that people complain of so many symptoms as this occurs, and I'm going to show you why that occurs. So I always think it's really important for you to be able to understand your body. Therefore, you'll be able to know whether your body needs um, support in many different areas. And particularly as black people, we know that some conditions are a little bit more um, tricky for us, and menopause is one of them. We tend to suffer from them a lot longer, with hot flushes being one of the biggest symptoms that women complain about. We know that we have a fixed number of eggs in the ovary and the older we become, um, the, then we know that the amount of estrogen produced reduces down. And it's this estrogen that is implicated in our hot flushes. Estrogen is also made in the adrenal glands and fat cells. And your adrenal glands are your stress glands. They help you cope with stress. So for, as a black population, if we experience more stress, even in the forms of microaggressions, we're more likely to kind of run out of our estrogen earlier. So also remember periods stop because of the low levels of estrogen and progesterone mean that lying in the womb isn't stimulating the normal cycle and then these hormone levels can fluctuate for years before eventually the lying in the womb becomes thin and doesn't bleed. So these are the stages of the menopause. Um, I just want to just complete, um, just confirm you're seeing the full slide or you're seeing it small. You're seeing the full slide, fantastic. Small. Yes, we see it's it. It's small. Okay. So let me just show you. Center view. So I'll just use the slide screen. Is that better? Yes. Fantastic. Excellent. So before you get to the stage, understandably, we're looking at most people, there will be a time when you get these, um, a, a, a time when your periods are coming and going a little bit um, slower, and it's called the perimenopause, and it can last for four to five years or longer. 
Now, perimenopause is a stage in the beginning of menopause, it's all symptoms to the postmenopause. And this is a time when it actually tends to be quite prolonged in women um, of black origin. So therefore, in this stage, as you remember, I just said a minute ago, you've got the estrogen and the progesterone levels changing. So they're trying to stop the line of the womb from building up, and then the estrogen um, will be trying to promote the line of the womb from building up. So it therefore means that your bleeding can become erratic, it can become heavy, it can become prolonged, it can be flooding and clots, and generally unpredictable. And it takes some time um, to settle down, and eventually you'll enter into a period called the postmenopause. And this is a time following the last period, and it's usually defined as more than 12 months with no periods in someone with intact ovaries or immediately following surgery, the ovaries have been removed. And it's important to recognize when this has happened. Premature menopause can occur in people um, sometimes, and it's normally when it's earlier than the age of 40. And it's known as premature menopause because you know ideally um, most women's reproductive years should last well into their 40s um, and sometimes it can be a form of surgical or medical treatment sometimes it runs in families so what are the symptoms so um, we talked about the hot flushes and night sweats you've had that lovely um, graph that we just put up before we've got headaches dizziness vaginal dryness difficulty sleeping mood swings, memory loss, loss of interest in sex, weight gain, um, the list goes on and on. And I'm gonna go show you another slide with um, lots of lists uh, in a minute as well. And so essentially um, menopause is complicated. We're not all the same. Our genes aren't all the same. We're all made slightly differently, which means that um, some of us were affected with work. I was definitely somebody that was affected by work. Some of us, it's social lives. We feel a bit anx of anxiety. I'm worried. Um, some of us, it's sex and close intimate relationships. And in many people, they, um, partners will complain that they feel um, helpless. So look at this long list. Um, I just want um, you to put into the chat um, any sort of symptoms that you feel that you've experienced that are not on the list. So you can see hot flashes, cold flashes as well, night sweats, a clammy feeling, heart palpitations, irritability, mood swings, trouble sleeping, irregular periods, low sex drive, dry vagina, fatigue, anxiety, depression, the list goes on. Some people also complain of electric shock feelings, feeling that like they've got rashes on their body, hearing slightly differently, um, problems with incontinence, which tends to be temporary if you institute really good lifestyle changes, tense muscles, achy muscles, stiff muscles, sore breasts, headaches, the gut goes funny as well, allergies can worsen and the immune system is changing, weight gain because of the estrogen and issues that people may have, um, and then also um, ha um, hair loss and thinning, facial hair, dizziness, vertigo, change body odor, um, including people complaining of vaginal discharge or altered smell, um, tingling in the hands, like even carpal tunnel, bleeding from the gum, burning in the mouth, bad breath, um, thinning bones, weakened fingernails, ringing ears, and the list goes on. So you can see it's a time where it's um, really, really challenging. But if you look at most of those symptoms, they can be managed by lifestyle. So if you look at the first um, sort of... Uh, eight symptoms they're related to something called your sympathetic drive and that's um your um essentially your system for flight or flight or nervous system your body gets turned on to be worried about something um and in the menopause because of the way do you remember when i talked about your adrenal glands being your stress glands they get affected um because of your estrogen that drops down, they have to become under more pressure. So you're more likely to get these fluctuations of this big drive of something is wrong and it manifests in um, hot flushes. So you can actually reset that by um, bringing it back down to doing something called um, sometimes even things like mindfulness to switch on the parasympathetic nervous system, which is your calm brain. So you're trying to switch off from a survive brain to a thrive brain. And we'll talk about that a bit more. And then also, if you look on to um, 24, 25, uh, 26 and 27, 
um, those are related to um, uh, gut issues. And so we need to be very careful about how we eat and change the way we eat. And I'm not just talking about healthy eating, but smarter eating. So our gut mind right, um, uh, sort of connection, you may have heard lots and lots about that. And that's to do with the microbiome. That is essentially the healthy bacteria that sit in the gut that determine what we absorb. But they also do so much more than that. There was also the factory for um, our happy hormone, such as serotonin as well. So um, really important to think about gut health. And I'll have a slide later about probiotics that will talk a bit more about that. And then when we're talking about um, things like osteoporosis, hair loss and thinning and facial hair, we're thinking about dietary things that can really help to counter that. Um, and one thing I'll talk about a bit later is um, the use of collagen. So this is explaining why you get these symptoms for showing you the lovely sort of hormonal changes between progesterone and estrogen. So progesterone is your one in the in the um, purple and progesterone is normally your stabilizing hormone. So that helps for you to um, it manages, sorry, the one in the um, orange, the orange dots. It helps to manage the lining of your womb so it, it's not too thick. Um, but as you can see, that really drops during the menopause. So therefore, the lining of the womb becomes a bit erratic. You get that erratic bleeding. Now, if we look at the estrogen, can you see how that's cycling up and down through the menopause? Because the body's um, pushing it out and not pushing it out due to all the different changes in signals. So this is really a time where your body comes under quite a lot of stress. And it's really important to take care of your body. Foundational to any um, transition in life is self-care. If you don't have that self-care, you cannot leverage, reach your full potential to thrive beyond this stage. So let's look a bit deeper into the role of estrogen. So estrogen is important for your bone formation. It also affects vitamin D and calcium. So you can imagine that's why um, it, um, people complain um, about feeling achy joints and um, um, back. Um, and that's why I think collagen and also as well as vitamin D supplements are a really good thing to take. Um, we know that there are medical studies that show taking a good powdered collagen of at least 10 grams makes a massive difference to women's health um, in increasing the, um, um, the bone density and reducing the risk of osteopenia, that's um, sort of thinning bones and osteoporosis. You can see again, estrogen affects the skin, hair and nails. And again, we believe um, that collagen is a good thing to use for this. Um, also, um, there's something I'll introduce you to later, something called choline. Choline helps collagen integrate um, and helps the keratin to integrate into the hair. So really, really and also into the nails. So really a good um, response I've seen in my clients and women that use the choline supplement. It makes a massive difference. The other thing I'd like you to introduce you to, uh, thinking about mucous membranes and dry eyes and vagina, is the use of hyaluronic acid. This promotes a hydration of um, our cells and therefore reduces the symptoms that people complain about from these conditions. Um, as yeah, so you can see, estrogen raises um, the level of good cholesterol. So there we can think about dietary modifications to ensure that our, um, we're taking healthy fats. Fats are good if you take the healthy um, right fats such as avocado um, and olive oil. And then we can see estrogen, the immune system. So that's, again, why I talked about the probiotics um, really being important for you to um, ensure that you switch on the right parts of your immune system. And that also includes really thinking about eating foods that are rich in um, probiotics, such as kimchi, kefir, sauerkraut, um, all these things that are like fermented type foods. Um, and for people who come from um, parts of Africa, so things like Kenke are really rich in um, probiotics. After the development and, uh, sorry, also estrogen, as you can see, affects the development and regulation of brain for cognitive function. So again, I tell my women to really think about taking a choline supplement. Again, we know that it enhances cognitive function, um, really, really important. And then when it comes to mood, um, we know that estrogen is lowered, but probiotics, many people don't know, are as good as a mild antidepressant. Um, so that's really, really important for you to consider taking that because it would make a massive um, um, difference. So then we come on to progesterone. So what is progesterone as we delve a bit deeper? 
it's really um, regulates cortisol, your stress hormone. So remember I talked a bit about um, as a black population, we often undergo a little bit more stress than people, particularly if we're living in um, a society where we are the others. Um, so it means that um, we have to cope with lots of microaggressions. Our cortisol le levels will be higher. So can you see now how cortisol is important in sleep and mood? So if we're more stressed, and then it's going to affect our sleep and mood. So we need to have strategies to help bring down those stress levels, those cortisol levels, so that our sleep is not um, too affected. It's also important in normalizing blood sugar levels. So therefore, when we're talking about type 2 diabetes, where people are always acting as if it's um, broken, you know, our diets are broken or, or odd for um, black populations, often it can come right down to stress as well. And you can also see about the use of fat um, for energy. So if they get, this goes low, then people will tend to put on more weight um, and also facilitates normal thyroid levels. So if our thyroid is our met metabolic hormones, if that drops, we'll find that our metabolic um, processes also drop. People have been talking more and more about testosterone and testosterone is important in the sense that it's really important for muscle growth. This drops around the time of the menopause. And, and it's also important for energy uh, levels and mood confidence, again, brain and bone density. So we talked about cognition, choline, and also actually collagen that contains a high amount of glycine and amino acid that will really enhance your um, brain function and as well as your bone density. But when we think about muscle growth, then we start to talk about strength training. So that's doing smart exercise, not exercise that stresses the body and raises your cortisol levels, but exercise that promotes muscle growth. So simple body weight exercises. Um, and I teach in my program about just adding simple things in your daily routine. As you brush your teeth, you do 10 um, squats. You know, as you're about to go to bed, have a pair of weights next to the bed, you do um, 10 um, um, sort of bicep curls. Those are the things, the little things that you add on as you go on that make a difference rather than saying, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to go and run. It's sometimes very hard to incorporate those into your everyday. And so these are the signs and symptoms of low testosterone, um, phys as we've mentioned before, hair loss and thinning as well. Um, and we've talked about the use of the collagen that can really help with that. Um, and then, um, and then um, decreased muscle mass. So it's really interesting. A lot of women don't realize how important that muscle mass is because the lower your muscle mass goes, the lower your metabolism goes and therefore it affects um, things overall. So my um, mantra is master the menopause. Don't let the menopause master you. Your, you, your body's not bigger than you. You control your body. Um, and therefore, despite all these disruptive symptoms, if you use that as a time to leverage and reposition how you live your life, you will thrive through the menopause. I strongly believe menopause is a time where it's teaching you what are you a little bit weaker at? that you just need to adjust so that you can make a difference and live the latter part of your life, perhaps even stronger than the first part of your life. Um, I saw an article the other day talking about the rise of the fit 50s and it's the fit 60s, the fit 70s. It's not us uh, about us saying um, we're aging and that's it. There's a, there's a whole science around healthy aging. Just because you're getting older does not mean you need to be getting weaker. Um, and it doesn't mean you need to be collecting extra um, sort of medical disorders with lots of um, other issues. You can be stronger and healthier and the latter part of your life. And there are lots of good um, science and data that shows it. And it comes down to really looking at it from a biopsychosocial model. That's really thinking about your body, the correct nutrition, exercise, sleep, vitamins, immune strength and rest. Rest that often we don't incorporate as a community, we don't often advocate it. It's really important to rest to bring down those stress levels. Then we move on to thinking about relaxation, massage, music, mindfulness, art, visualization, thought control, spirituality. These are all the things that you enjoy that help you, again, live your life well and live it healthily. Um, and then we're also talking about relationships. So your network, the people that surround you, who are the ones that add into your bank and give you strength, vitality, hope, peace and strength? Who are the people that take away from that bank? I'm not saying that you need to not see those people, but you need to also ensure that in order for you to live life well, you fill your bank and your network with people that make you strong. So what is my story? 
I'm just going to turn my video on here. So um, as you can see me, I'm um, a 51 year old woman who has lived, I was, I often feel many lives. Um, having been from the age of 15, I started working um, and that life has not always been straightforward for me. I tried, um, you know, I've done several degrees, as you can see from the list that was behind my name, but um, I um, found myself having to apply to medical school three times before I got in. And then in my, I went as a mature student, I was already married. Um, and in my final year of medical school, I became pregnant. Um, so again, that was another source of stress and, and worry perhaps for me, that I was able to um, still graduate with a really good degree. But it meant that I eventually, um, you know, I've never really stopped working. I've got three children in total, one 22, 18 and 15. Um, and uh, probably now, about seven years ago, I started to experience hot flushes. Um, I didn't know there were hot flushes, despite the fact I was a gynecologist, because I just felt I was too young. I was 45 at the time, um, but I had a lot going on in my life. I was a director of medical education at Imperial. I was doing a house renovation, which wasn't going well because the uh, builder went bankrupt. My husband also had to, was traveled a lot, so I was mainly on my own. And I had my children trying to sort out A-levels, GCSEs and 11 pluses all around the same time. Um, and I thought I just essentially was getting lots of flu until the, um, the winter went um, and then the flu never went, the fever never went. Um, and so I spoke to um, people at work. I think, oh, my gosh, I've got the whole flushes. Maybe I go through the menopause. And they're like, Karen, don't be silly. You're not going through the menopause. You're too young. And so um, a long and short of it, I did a test and I found out that my FSH level and LH level were high. And that is basically telling me I was going through the menopause. Um, so at that time, I said, oh, Karen, you're very young to be going through the menopause. You need to start HRT. I also had problems with blood pressure at the time. I'd also noticed I started to gain a lot of weight, particularly around my mid part. And I decided to start with the HRT. The HRT didn't quite sit with me. I felt that my hot flashes were getting a little bit worse. Um, my blood pressure um, still wasn't that great. Um, and I essentially um, just started on a, a whole journey of not thinking just about conventional medicine, but uh, a whole nother field called um, lifestyle medicine. And this is a true science. So it's not just simply about, oh, I'm going to do a bit of a diet and exercise, lose weight and get my blood pressure down. It's really using the, um, the pillars of um, a science called nutrogenomics, which is nutrition related to health outcomes and switching on healthy genes together with a science around exercise to understanding what are the right types of exercise to do for women um, and for um, certain health outcomes you want to gain, together with another science called positive psychology, which is really using the neuroscience of the brain to understand how to switch on health within our bodies. And that's simply it. Um, and I encountered on, uh, on a wonderful journey for, um, for example, um, I learned about collagen. That's when I, I realized I needed it for my thinning hair. My hair was very thin. I had really thin patches here and here. Um, I, and, and that really helped. It also helped with my joint aches and pains. I was even wondering if I'd be able to continue as a doctor because I had so many aches that even delivering a baby at cesarean section was very difficult. Um, it helped with my knees. It helped me with um, the knees, I thought, always creaked and made noises as I went up the stairs. Um, uh, started to get better with collagen, but then I also found something called um, strength training. Um, and so I started to do squats um, 20 a day. My knee pain went and I had strength around my knee. Initially when I started, it was sore, but I only did it to the limits of what I could um, tolerate. And then also found walking. So walking, I realized, um, made a massive difference to my um, overall well-being because the way you connect with nature appreciate nature and it helped to bring down some of the stress loads um, that I was experiencing at that time and then combine them with some dietary changes about different types of ways to bring um, uh, uh, my overall sort of blood pressure down as well as maintaining and getting back to a healthy weight so I lost between probably about one and two stone um, just with that regime and it made me realize that the the information that we give to our patients is incomplete we are reactive as doctors often. So there's a problem and we put a sticky plaster on it and we are not proactive. We're not helping people to leverage to their better sense of um, being and well-being. 
And um, these are very simple steps that you can make that will make a, a difference to your entire life and to your family too. And what I realized as well is that I was different from my other counterparts because of something that happens, particularly around um, black health. And these are called cellular changes. So we see racial differences in telomere length. What are telomeres? They are the ends of your chromosome, they're sequences of DNA, and they're used as a marker to look for biological aging. And Jerome Nimis, our, you know, or, or due to her, was a, a lovely lady who lived in America, actually a doctor who couldn't quite um, really um, answer the reason why more black women were dying. It just wasn't as simple as saying, um, actually, it's due to their lifestyle. There were young black women coming in with preeclampsia, blood pressure issues. She worked with pregnancy. So she started to do this research and realized the same women, you know, live in the same area if they're black versus white had an accelerated biological age of about 7.5 years. And that was my story. So my story essentially um, was also that I wanted to be involved in a well-being project, a work. Um, and um, they hooked me up to some wires. Um, and essentially, um, you wore it for a week and then you came back at the end of the week and handed it in. And they would tell you a bit about your well-being. Now, I had the man calling me saying, Karen, we need to speak to you now. We need to speak to you now. And I'm like, why? So you've got the worst reading we've ever had. And in that year, week, I'd had... Um, you know, uh, essentially, you know, major hemorrhages at work. I'd even broken my toe. It was just a, uh, you know, childcare issues. But he said, my stress level never came down. I'm not somebody that stresses. I'm generally smile quite a lot. They're generally happy. So I'd started to think, why could this be? And if I carried on the way I was, I'm more likely to end up with really severe blood pressure and even perhaps a stroke. And what it was, it's was accelerated aging and stress. As I was growing older, the telomeres at the end of my chromosome um, were shrinking. I had accelerated aging because of the, per you know, the way my lifestyle had been, with the pressures from my career, working from the age of 15. I didn't really have a lifestyle plan, a personalized health plan to take care of myself. So I essentially had something which was called a metabolic syndrome. And if you look at the epigenetic signature at the bottom, that is simply saying we're all born with a set of genes. You know, people talk about nature versus nurture. So what we nurture those genes with determines whether we switch on the healthy parts of our genes or the um, parts of our genes that lead to illness. Now, for me, I had switched on through my early life, social contacts and stress exposure. I'd switched on the epigenetic signature leading to inflammatory issues, which included things like the joint aches and pains. I had um, a hay fever, um, um, lots of eczema, dry skin, really dry scalp. Um, and um, psychologically tended to I feel like I was okay. Um, but some people may experience that as a form of anxiety or pressure. Um, but overall within my body, it was leading to what we call endothelial dysfunction. And that's the lining of your vessels leading to a higher stroke risk. Um, and that's why my blood pressure was rising. Um, and this is called an allostatic load. Black women are more likely to reach menopause two years uh, earlier. That's age 49. I was only 45. Perimenopause is more likely to be longer. And stress and social economic factors are likely to play a part. Now, this is the summary of the SWAN study that was performed um, looking at menopause symptoms in Black women. Um, and it's important to recognize that we can take in control of our health. About 60% is behavioral, 20% is um, healthcare system and 20% genetics, but we know 60% is behavioral in the way that our outcomes are. So what is an allostatic load? It refers to the wear and tear on the body that comes from the accumulation of chronic stress. And we've been learning stress isn't all about in your head. It writes itself on your body. There is a book called The Body Keeps the Score. It can damage your cardiovascular health, disrupt your digestion and spark inflammation. And what is that? The inflammation is when um, the, um, the gut becomes a bit more leaky and allows in um, sort of damaging chemicals that shouldn't be allowed into your body through your diet. Um, and this can lead to a greater risk for disease and lowered resilience overall in the face of illness. But um, 
Another way to put it is weathering. And this is what the um, I've just shown you is that we found that black women at all social economic levels had the highest allostatic load scores compared with other people of the same age. And it was the effects of living in a race conscious society. Um, and, and it might be more likely to affect women because we engage in high effort coping. Systemic racism is literally bad for our health. Though it's certainly not the only factor in which in when which women reach menopause or how long the transition lasts. It does, however, lead to an early onset of perimenopause or longer transition. We know hormones are very sensitive, as I've shown you in the first few slides, to stress. And at least one study suggests that psychological stress is predictive of an even earlier age of media menopause in um, African-Americans. So more severe hot flashes, night sweats, um, doesn't certainly mean help a person cope with high stress levels and becomes a vicious cycle. So I hope you've now understood that really well. So what are our treatment options? Um, and you can see there's a whole host here. So a lot of people focusing on HRT or actually, in, as in the case of a lot of community, um, black communities, they do nothing at all. I just forgive me for my voice. I've been up overnight delivering babies. Um, but treatment options include lifestyle, dietary. Also, there's something called bioidentical hormones and natural alternatives. So when we're talking about hot flushes, there are really good um, things such as red clover, phytoestrogens, which you can get from drinking soya milk and black cohosh that are really good at controlling those. And then for um, helping with bleeding, there are good things such as called Agnes Castus and also um, something called seed cycling that can help to calm down the lining of the womb. The other thing I want to introduce you to is that why is everybody always talking about walking when we're talking about lifestyle? Um, look at the benefits of walking. So this is a study that was done on people to show what did it change? It reduced Alzheimer's. So when we're talking about Alzheimer's, that's the cognitive decline that occurs in the brain that is needed for um, general sort of understanding of, um, of life and things. Reduced cancer risk. And we know that cancer risk is higher in black populations. Improved mental well-being. Improved quality of life. Improved muscle and joint function. Reduced risk of heart attacks and strokes. And reduced risk of type 2 diabetes. And this is when I'm talking about sometimes people aren't, saying they're going to go and join the gym or necessarily lift weights. But this is a way to incorporate those steps within your life to overall uh, empower you and let you age well and age healthily. And then when we come on to food, um, so I'm just going to go through these one at a time. Um, so we've got our B vitamins. The so B vitamins are really good at um, helping your um, uh, uh, sort of energy levels. Um, and then when we're talking about cardiovascular health, we're thinking about sunflower seeds, avocado and salmon, because the high amounts of omega-3, which reduces the inflammatory response, are really important. Um, and you need at least 300 milligrams of that uh, a day to help reduce the inflammation and stabilize your um, overall um, system. And that really helped me and worked really well, particularly with, my, uh, with hay fever, and other things such as um, dry scalp um, and dry skin. When we're thinking about your energy levels and um, blood sugar, really important that you incorporate a diet that's high in protein and oats. So the reason why um, protein and oats are really good is because if they slowly release the sugar. Um, whereas when you're eating things um, which you haven't got enough protein in them, like all the white carbs, you have these big surges in sugar, and then it drops down again and really quickly within the hour and you feel hungry again. Um, but you want something that releases slowly. Now, vitamin C, really, really important because of the, remember we talked about the adrenal glands right at the beginning and stress. So with women who are going through the menopause, I always advocate to take um, a high amount of vitamin C. So it helps for you to deal with the stress, with the berry um, and really um, um, also um, you can take berries such as black um, currants, blueberries, strawberries um, and also raspberries are really, really um, powerful, high in antioxidants so that help against cell damage um, with, uh, together with other citrus fruits as well, like limes and lemon and drinking lime water or lemon water in the morning is also really good. And then you've got the minerals, which are really important for relaxation. So your magnesium, lots of us are magnesium deficient, at least the tremors. I used to have a tremor in my hand here 
Um, when I take my magnesium, it disappears. And actually, when I'm stressed, it comes back again. And um, and I know that I can now manage that rather than going to the doctor and asking for something for tremors, um, just through recognizing what I'm deficient in my body that has settled. Now, I know a lot of us don't necessarily love green tea. I love it now. I've used it um, for many years. Um, really good as an antioxidant, but very good for the stomach as well, for the gut. Um, contains something which is really high in antioxidants. Um, so really, again, so we're always thinking about as you age, you want things that help your body to repair. And you need more of those things as we age to prevent that aging process, as well as to help prevent all the damage from the general stress that we undergo. Um, and green tea, really, really good for that as well. And con concentration and anxiety. Vitamin D, I hope you all know, is a precursor um, for serotonin. I've got a slide on that later. And then probiotics, again, I've got a slide but on that later. And then nuts and seeds, I consider this the mind diet, really helping to boost your cognitive ability in the brain and the way you function. Um, be, um, beware of high sugar diets. And then for those of you that are thinking a little bit of um, trying to manage or control weight, think about two tools called carb cycling. So carb cycling, rather than completely cutting out carbs, which I found really hard to do, I tried. Um, but because carbs are actually really important for brain function and all the work I do, I was getting really exhausted and tired. So what I did is I tried um, a slightly different approach, which is one day I would have carbs. The next day I wouldn't have any. I would have, you know, salads and salmon and soups and so forth. And the next day I'll go back to my carbs still with good portion control. But I found that helps me overall to lose weight well. Um, and most people want to lose weight. They think it's going to be like this one downward curve. It's not. It tends to be like this. It goes like this and like that. So you go up, down, up, down, up, down until finally you're right nearer, nearer the bottom. And that's due to fluctuations even in um, sort of fluid retention as well. Intermittent fasting, again, is really good. And that is really kind of extending the period where you don't eat so that your body starts to use your fat storage uh, as energy and people lose weight on that. I, again, um, would have tried that for eating just between 12 and 6. So I have my lunch at or sort of at, at 12. If I can't do 12, I do 11.30. And then, again, I have a good meal at 6 o'clock. And in the morning, I may just have a cup of tea with no milk or something in it if I'm trying to be um, particular. But I would add my collagen powder into it, which actually helps give me um, lots of energy. Um, and I'll show you some of the products at the end of the talk. Um, and so really, it's important for you also to understand your total intake and also to make sure you're having foods which are whole foods, so not processed foods. So processed diets really, really affect the gut and cause more inflammation, make it leak, let in the um, chemicals they shouldn't do. You get inflammatory cytokines, you get this whole process of changes within the gut. Um, and so really important for you to have healthy macro foods, we call them which generally black populations are quite um, good at, but then just be careful about the salts and the other things that we add on top of it um, that can affect um, overall our health. Think about switching more to um, maybe like things like brown rice. You can use that in stir fry, still it tastes really nice. And even if you don't want to switch and you want to continue with white rice and, um, and other things, um, really think about having portion control with that. And if you want white bread, don't buy it from the and the packets in the supermarket. They're really high processed breads. Try and find a local bakery um, that you can use. So probiotics, what are probiotics? So a, a little taster into this, um, and I'll tell you a little bit later about my course later, where we have time to really delve into this. An hour is not enough to go through the whole lifestyle um, changes that you are able to make. Um, so essentially probiotics um, really are about promoting the healthy gut bacteria, but people think it's just in the gut, but you have um, health, you have healthy bacteria in the vagina, in the mouth, um, you have it um, in your skin as well, you know, even, you know, on your um, scalp as well, um, when we think about dandruff and hair, um, you have it on your hands everywhere, you have healthy bacteria. So if you have a cut on your hand, your healthy bacteria will help fight against infection. But if you have the wrong balance, because remember, like, for example, high sugar diets feed um, unhealthy bacteria. They feed what we call pathogenic bacteria. Therefore, you will end up more likely end up with um, problems such as, you know, urine infections, vaginal thrush, which we do see more often in people who have type two diabetes. The other effect with probiotics, which we're seeing, is that it switches on the healthy part of the immune system. So, for example, 
people who took um, sort of pro, uh, uh, a vaccine, if you take probiotics, your immune system has a higher level of antibody function. And it's the same, for example, if you were to catch a virus, I would tell all my um, um, women who perhaps get COVID and they're pregnant, double up your probiotics, double up your vitamin D, your C, all of these help to boost the way your own body responds to that infection. And it's all about the gut brain axis. I mentioned before about serotonin being made by your healthy bacteria. I've talked about the anti-inflammatory infection. Um, also, the other thing for you to know about is it actually also reverts some virus activity that can cause cancer, particularly around HPV near the cervix. So the studies are so strong that they're now trying to develop a vaginal probiotic to be used in low resource countries to help prevent cervical cancer. So um, probiotics revert um, HPV and um, cervical changes also. So when we come to supplements, the ones that I would probably um, advocate for all of you to consider using, so probiotics I've met, talked about. So this is really about your lifestyle supplements, important in gut health due to hunger signals to regulate immunity and vaginal and the lining of the womb as well. So when you're thinking about your heavy bleeding, if you bleed heavily or intermittently, it can change the microbiome of the vagina, which is the healthy bacteria, which can change the pH and back and forth. So taking a probiotic helps to stabilize that out. Magnesium, I really take magnesium, particularly when I've had a long night, like last night, I'll be taking an extra dose of magnesium today to help me with my muscle function when I'm feeling really sore and achy and really tired but also helps modify good glucose levels and good for sleep. Um, and then my superfoods, uh, superfoods I love and talk about all the time, a beetroot, really high in antioxidants and good for cell repair and rejuvenation, but also promotes blood flow into the muscles. So it actually gives you a lot of uh, a boost of energy. Um, so I have a lot of people who come back and say about the supplement, wow, I felt so much energy when I took it, Karen, what did you put in it? And it's just simply beetroot. So it's not the same as eating it, so when you look at the science behind it, you need a really high dose of beetroot in order to affect that change. Um, and then turmeric, again, it's a really anti-inflammatory compound. It kills cancer cells, but you have to have it in a high enough dose to make that difference. We don't sell that in our um, company, but we do do um, pomegranate in the, uh, with a collagen. We have a superfood collagen range. Pomegranate, again, really powerful anti-cancer and really high polyphenols and antioxidants. So um, high dose pomegranate, also really good for prostate, for, for any men on the call um, to help keep that um, uh, at bay. And then vitamin D, vitamin C, as you can see, it's more than just a vitamin. If you're low in vitamin D, which I was around that time of the, my menopause transition, more likely to have high blood pressure, um, more likely to have depression, more likely to have type two diabetes, more likely to have infections, dry skin, hair problems. So the list goes on and on. Take your vitamin D. Premium um, um, and also myonositol, really important in sugar control. So anybody who's um, been challenged with type 2 diabetes, I, you know, I meet clients to discuss this and recently saw somebody at um, the Linda Wing, where I also am, and um, she had been told that she had the blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, borderline, um, as well as um, some issues with um, cervical health. And I managed to modify that within two weeks with some lifestyle changes. Her blood pressure has now come back down. She's not going on to medication. Her sugar levels are stabilizing. But these are programs which it you know really requires people to really invest in, but you will see the benefits. And we talked about collagen already, um, it, about healthy gut line, and I haven't mentioned in the same way. Um, unfortunately, a lot of black people don't think about collagen because they think collagen is for skin and for wrinkles, so mainly for white people. But collagen is really, really good for black people as well, <clears throat> because it has so much more benefits than the skin. Really important in generating a healthy gut lining, which can help reduce gut um, hunger levels. But also, you know, when I talked about that leaky gut, <clears throat> you don't want the leaky gut, which then affects <clears throat> what your body absorbs, as well as helping to maintain the muscle and joint health and immune system as well. So it's made up of different proteins that your body takes in and um, helps your immune system to improve. And then we talked about omega-3, omega which is important also in memory and reduction in Alzheimer's, also really important in cardiovascular health, and then choline for brain health, for cognitive function, both adults and in children as well. So for your grandkids. So when we talk about exercise, just a few tips. Um, so start slowly. Schedule relaxation time, 
walking I, I don't necessarily advocate running I think it causes too much stress on the body um, but if you do want to do running do interval running um, think about exercises called HIIT 15 minutes three times a week um, there's an app called fit on app that you can use to do that it's completely free I really love Pilates and yoga which I think are really good for the pelvic floor and help the pelvic floor to really um, recover and to be strong You're, you've got muscles there you don't have to suffer with incontinence or problems um, you know even I remember being told by somebody I may need surgery at some point I've not needed surgery but I've really used things like pilates and pelvic floor to strengthen my pelvic floor and to avoid any urinary issues and at the time I was suffering from urgency when I was transitioning through the menopause which means you literally run into the toilet thinking you're about to wet yourself but actually it was um, about really trying to stabilize the muscles in that area and bring everything back to normal and then stretching is a really underrated exercise. Stretching should be part of everybody's routine. It really helps to um, engage the, um, the muscles of your uh, whole body and also engage something you're called your Thrive Brain. That's your parasympathetic nervous system. So it just brings that sense of calm and things, things back to normal. Um, so I'll just mention a little bit about um, risk of HRT. Um, obviously, you know, you cannot treat you, lots of people you consider not treating and people worry about cancer risks. So it's really just trying to understand that you've got a good um, uh, site called BMS, the British Menopause Society site. And you can see there will be 23 cases of breast cancer diagnosed in the UK general population. Um, an additional four if you're on combined HRT. Um, and then um, if you're thinking about the um, having HRT it's better to have the patch because there are, are far far less than in the cases where women are using the pill but you can also see that if, we, if we're thinking about breast cancer BMI which is a, a raised weight um, it also is a factor in that too so really and the reason that is is because fat cells produce estrogen and if you're to have a higher amount of estrogen it causes proliferation of the bre breast tissue which can sometimes become disordered and lead um, to um, cancer. So essentially, um, we're coming towards a few things I just want to introduce you to, um, is um, about having a holistic approach, self-care is a priority. We talked about mastering the menopause and transitioning into a new phase. So these are some of the resources that you can to maybe just take a photo or screenshot of the um, screen now. but the BMS is probably the best one. And then I want to introduce you to um, uh, programs that I've started because I'm really um, passionate about people from diverse backgrounds thriving in, um, from a health perspective, but also um, all, an all round perspective with wellbeing being focused um, on mental wellbeing, physical wellbeing, relational wellbeing, financial wellbeing. And so I um, actually do a Thrive Power Circle group, which I've started up to for um, doctors and really empowering them to recognize the value as a black doctor, who you are um, and um, who you can become and really leveraging your whole um, um, brand. And in the same way, I've um, modified this and developed this for women transitioning through the menopause particularly for women from black backgrounds. And one of the things that I base this on is Maslow's hierarchy. You may or may not have heard of it, but I call it the Thrive Pyramid. Um, so it's really recognizing that we all have our basic needs, psychological needs and self-fulfillment needs. And we can't get to the top unless we eat, meet each one at a time. So your biological and physical must be strong for you to um, feel that you're in a place of um, safety. Because if you haven't had food and um generally feel warm, you can't then feel safe. Um, network's important, a sense of love and belongingness. They're really teaching you how to build the networks around you, um, particularly at a time when self-esteem may be a bit low because of changes, body changes and mind changes, teaching you how to uh, maintain that cognitive function to a high ability. Um, my brain felt that it was not working. I had completely lost my brain, to be honest with you. Um, I was usually what I would call um, uh, somebody who does so many things at once. I couldn't really do much, but I have now just finished doing an MBA and I got a distinction on my dissertation. And that was from being of a place where I actually had to leave my job as director of medical education because I just wasn't functioning to the level that was expected. But I now since then got a, actually even a higher role. And this is all going through the menopause without HRT. 
And then aesthetic is just really thinking about how you surround your life with the things that um, give you joy and beauty. Um, for some people, they love baking, flowers, gardening. Some people, the way they dress, the way they look. But it's really ensuring that you have that real sense of your creative self embedded within your um, personal development plan. Then you're able to reach your self-actualization, as in look beyond your own needs, because you've grown so much, you are able to start giving out. And that's when you reach um, the top of the pyramid, which is transcendence, where essentially your life shines so much that you're able to impart and give to others. So really thinking about the physiological, psychological, relational, spiritual, which leads you to being um, replenished and um, also um, not just stable, but really ongoing replenishment. So these are the principles that I um, do. So this is, will be part of the program that I deliver if you choose to join. Um, it's uh, talking about reduction in inflammation, cell repair, reduction in stresses, energy management, gut health, mood control, chronic disease management as well. So there will be um, sort of slots to be able to talk, particularly like if you have whatever it is that it is, you know, whether it's arthritis, blood pressure issues, pelvic floor issues, um, I'll be able to advise you on how to um, deal with those and there will be bespoke um, smaller sessions. So what is your healthy life? Dream. Um, don't allow anybody to tell you that you can't become the better version of yourself. Having a dream is one thing and living it is another. When you realize your dreams, it becomes easier to achieve your goals. Never let anybody tell you never. I've had been told to never so many times in my life from career to health. Um, and I have always proved them wrong. So the Menno Thrive program, what is it? It's thriving through with the menopause and beyond, but really it's taking you deeper into all the different things that we talked about now and touched on. Week one will be about hormonal thriving, understanding your changing body and metabolism, and we'll deal deeper into natural methods and supplementation. Week two is a body thrive, managing your weight, diet and exercise. I bring in a, a hair consultant that I work with to really get my hair back where we talk a lot about nutrition and diet, whereas I know a lot in the black population, we put things in our hair, but not thinking about what we need to eat or to change um, um, to get our hair to the best it can be um, and skin changes. And then sleep refresh. Again, I bring in a psychotherapist. And these are all people from the black community, how to rest and relax. And I teach you the positives of um, the pillars of positive psychology and what it actually means in terms of thought control not allowing yourself to catastrophize, think about the worst. How do you leverage your brain to provide and create that creative and wonderful life for yourself through your body and even into your future? How do you change the way that you think so that you're able to manage your mood disturbances, your relationships and networks and create a life that works well for you? Um, and we're just basically, we dive we really deep into how to thrive through the menopause. We talk about real issues um, and it will be delivered by myself in conjunction with a, um, a psychotherapist who's actually um, my sister. Um, and so we've come to the end. So I'm just, if you just give me a minute or two, um, I'm just quickly going to get the products ready and we can start maybe putting some questions into the chat, just getting ready to post to me because I can see Dr. Patrice will be ready for that. Yes. Um, while you're getting that ready, uh, uh, Dr. Rosh, I just want to thank you for that amazing um, presentation. I've learned so much. Um, even though I am a medic, there's a lot there about mental health and well-being that we don't really get taught in medical school, or even on our journeys as uh, doctors through, through hospital medicine. So I just want to thank you so much for that. And um, what I noticed as well, what I loved about the presentation uh, that a lot of the facts were backed with science, they were backed with um, research. Um, so that is, all, that is also very positive to hear that, you know, whatever the information that we are getting, which we're so fortunate to hear is backed by, um, backed by so much um, science. So that is just amazing. Um, we have a, a few questions here. Um, and I just wanted to start with um, Monica's. Um, first of all, she mentioned she wanted to hear, she was keen to hear about the natural ways of managing menopausal symptoms. So I'm sure she is um, very well, this question has very well been answered in your presentation. 
Um, so that's amazing. Uh, Janet wanted to ask about the book that you mentioned, The Body Keeps the Score, um, because when she did a quick search on it, several um, titles came up in that. And who's the author, author for that? Okay, let me um, just book. quickly yeah. tell you which one it is. It's upstairs. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll get that up. Okay. I was just thinking about doing a presentation as well. If we started um, doing these, having these habits and um, from our 20s, our 30s, mm. how much better our yeah, um, perimenopause definitely. and menopause will be and how much we can, um, how, how much our children can, can see. It. That's the book, Band Psych. Okay. So what's, what's the author's name? The author's name is um, Bessel van der Kolk. Right, okay. <laughs> so I don't know if Annabelle or uh, Natasha could put that in the chat for us, but thanks so much. And yeah, so I was thinking um, our children can learn so much from us, our girls especially, mm. if, because if we lead by example, um, because some, most times you talk to your girls and they, you know, what it goes from one ear and comes out the next, right? Yeah. If we lead by example. Um, they can learn so much from from us if we put these practices into into use. Most definitely. And I definitely, yeah, I, I also do a talk on PCOS and endometriosis, really mm -hmm. looking at lifestyle changes that you can make with that. Mm -hmm. I have really good results with my patients who choose a more natural option to prevent that progressing. So maybe we'll do one for the kids later as well. But so this is, so I've got a website called Be Pura, B-E-P-U-R-E-R. -E -E and you can get these products on the websites. And I'm probably gonna, it's called Be Pura. Ooh. And I will put, um, and so that's the probiotic. So we particularly formulated this probiotic, not all probiotics are equal. So the reason why this one is good, it's because it's got um, 20 billion um, um, probiotic um, within each dose, but some of them will only have five. So you'll find varying qualities of them out on the market, but always be careful about the ones you're getting. The other difference with this is that it contains a prebiotic. So a prebiotic is what the bacteria feed on. So things like ginger, your onions, your raw food, you know, when we're talking about salads, the reason why they're good is because they're allowing the healthy bacteria to grow. So this is formulated with a prebiotic called inulin in it. You won't find many that have that. Mm -hmm. This is the choline supplement. So again, when you search up, you're, you probably never heard of it before, but it's a B vitamin, which is becoming more and more known. Even if you put it in and, and you look at cognitive function, completely changed. My um, great aunt, um, who's in her 80s, so we gave her some of this and she's a completely different person. Now she raves about it everywhere in Ghana that everybody should go and get the choline. Um, my mum takes it also really, really good. I take it really good for children going through exams as well. And the reason why this is important is actually we're finding that about 70% of the population are deficient. It will be like another vitamin D crisis. You have to have it in your diet, it only comes in eggs and meat, but we don't eat enough eggs um, and meat probably, and the right type of meat to gain um, the choline. But it's a really rich brain building um, uh, a block. So, for example, in babies, if mums take these, we have less mum babies are admitted to neonatal unit because they're protected by the choline, helping them to regenerate brain pathways. And then we've got a collagen here. This one is um, the glow that was specially formulated. And this one comes with the beetroot and the pomegranate in it. And it has vitamin D and vitamin C. So the thing with collagen is that, again, not all collagens are equal. Um, some have a lower level. You can't take it in the capsule. The studies and research show you need at least 10 grams a day. Um, so we formulate it with 10 grams and the beetroot with the right amount to give you that energy boost um, and the pomegranate. So we're all thinking about cell repair. So me, you know, as I said to you, my hair was very thin, um, such that I've been had to wear braids for two, three years. And now my hair's completely changed just using um, collagen. And I, you know, I don't relax it or anything now. Okay. Um, and then... Um, Again, and I've had my hair fall out twice, I must say, in my lifestyle, in my lifetime. As a child, I've had it fall out. And as a teenager, I have it child fall out. So hair, I know, is a big thing with black women. And so within our program, we've got somebody that comes to talk about what you can do. It's inside out, not just slapping on things on top. Um, this other one, again, is restored for people who just want the beetroot um, within it. So again, very good for diabetes or type 2 diabetes. Even on your phone, if you search 
collagen and diabetes, you'll see that it's important because people who are, are um, pre-diabetic or diabetic lose more muscle mass. So it's not really good um, for them. And then the last one we have is Pura Rage. Again, it looks silver, but it has hyaluronic acid in it. And that's about the hydration that I talked about um, before. And you can use these either in herbal tea or um, if with the ones with the beetroot pomegranate with the rage, I um, use that in my normal coffee or tea I have every um, morning just with milk. Fantastic. Okay, that's fantastic. And does it dissolve very well? I, I found it so. Oh, yes, it dissolves really well. So yeah. we, we sourced it from a, a company actually in Switzerland who are medical grade, medical grade collagens. They used it for the osteopenia studies I talked about. So we didn't want to just get, um, basically we're using it for the medicine, not for the um, skincare, but obviously it has benefits with skin as well um, and teeth as well. Uh, you know, the list goes on and nails mm -hmm. and, and also your joints and back and so forth. Okay, thank you. Um, Marjorie has mentioned that she uses essential oils to help with the hot flush. Do you know of um, any... Um, essential oils that, uh, that we could so, use. Um, she's correct. So essentially, if you're thinking about your hot flush, your hot flush is a sympathetic overload in that moment in time. So there are a few things you can do that like we can do some, uh, you know, I'll probably at the end take you through some deep breathing exercises. So you're trying to switch off that sympathetic load. So we know things like lavender, the science shows are actually really good at switching on your thrive brain, which is your calm brain and switching off that sympathetic drive. So lavender is one I would definitely say. We know frankincense, um, which we, I should also have said, we've got a body butter treatment range as well, where we have very natural sheer butters mixed with lavender and avocado, which are really good for eczema and dry skin. But frankincense is also another one, which is really good and known for its calming properties on the mind. So we love that one as well. Okay. I like the sound of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, many benefits of lavender I've heard about um, with yeah. relaxation as well. Yeah. Um, and sleep, helping um, yeah. Uh, sleep. Yeah. yeah. Um, Miss Yea wanted to find out about, um, she, she thinks the science is really important. And thank you so much again for quoting those studies. Um, she wants to know what clinical trials have been carried out with a diaspora in the UK and or globally. Um, because uh, many women, say in Africa or sub-Saharan area, don't have menopausal symptoms, or at least they're very minimal. And she thinks it's probably due to the use of um, high levels of phytoestrogens, which is the estrogens contained in foods like yam. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I, I believe she's correct. So there's an element of a dietary change or a shift, but also the element of us not recognizing where we live because we're kind of, most people just get on with it. I think most of us were shocked about George Floyd, but the one thing that shocked me personally more about George Floyd was I thought I was the only one, but actually everybody was going through racism, which kind of made it even, even a bit worse because yeah. you started to hear of all these stories. So we, it, it, it just reflects how we just get on with it. It's yeah. something that we do. So we have this level of internal stress, but I totally agree with you. There's something about our foods and the problem is sometimes because people blacked out black food as bad food, and that's why we get these conditions, we don't really truly look at the, you know, the powerful nutritional elements of these wonderful foods that we have. For example, you know, there's a goosey or melon seeds that people crush and use that's, you know, really, really got good benefits. There's the yams that you've talked about, which have done in the whole way, in the, in the right way, and particularly macro foods. So when foods are, you know, broken down or powdered, you get the full elements the phytoestrogens from soya as well, the soya bean. Um, you know, I eat something sometimes for breakfast called Tom Brown. I don't know if anybody knows about it from Ghana. It's got peanuts ground in it. It's got soya beans, other things. You add milk to it. And that, again, is really, really good for symptoms. So you, you there were, we haven't been direct studies that I'm aware of, but I do know that there have been studies simply around drinking soya milk. So women who drink soya milk, are less likely to get hot flushes because of the amount of estrogen in it. So extrapolating that, I would say, yes, there are definitely benefits and more should be done. Great. Okay. Uh, Monica also wanted to mention about the symptoms. You mentioned about 40 different menopausal symptoms. And how, how well are these symptoms known, you think, amongst um, in the population or employers, um, uh, maybe... Um, 
Hmm. Do you think employers are sympathetic to women needing to take? Oh, I'm definitely off? not sympathetic, <laughs> particularly at the time when I was going through my issues. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I obviously um, left my job, but now there are is legislation in place, so they do need to be sympathetic. Mm -hmm. um, and to understand and if you imagine that we're probably um, disproportionately affected it's something that we need to really own and understand about legislation and those are sort, sort of the things that would go into if you choose to join up to the course. Annabelle also wanted to know how long uh, do the perimenopausal symptoms last? I know you mentioned it could vary yeah. from the woman. So, and yeah. it can be quite prolonged, can't it? In, uh, yes, it can be quite prolonged. Yeah, it's a very there. difficult question, but in mm -hmm. you know, the average person, they shouldn't really take more than four to five years, but definitely within the black population, they can take seven to ten. You know, we have probably an additional two years of symptoms. Wow, that's amazing. Mm. Um, the um, the science behind biological aging, I know you mentioned it. Mm. And telomere length so that was for the geeky ones in in the in the in the session this morning um that was really good mm. um, and it really helps us to understand how you know for example I always remember like being in medical school I don't know if you did some of these researches um using vitamin c that we did looked at vitamin c in people who smoke because we know that the issue with smoking is that it causes cell damage so just think of it as you know an environment of putting somebody in as if they're living over a period of 10 years, you'll see what all these um, free radicals, the things that are released, are released from the environment due to the body. So that was the experiment. So it's with somebody smoking, and then you gave them the vitamin C and it mopped up all these free radicals, these cell damage things, and actually the damage was less. Yes. And it's really people understanding that how this can make a massive difference to your life. And actually as black people, we need to be very careful, but not just about taking any supplement on the market because You'll have some brands who, who are very well known, say that they're the number one brand, look at the amount they have in there. They have very minimal amounts of vitamin C, other things just to say it's in there and sell it on. And they will add gum, lots of other additives, other things which aren't really great. Um, again, just to sell it all um, on. But if you um, even buy standalone vitamin C supplement, which can even be cheaper than that, um, you will gain more benefits because you're starting to make sure that you're also repairing your cells internally. And if you also practice a relaxation or a, a rest life, um, you know, like for example, I'm busy, I've worked all night, but I will find time to rest today. I'll probably have a bath. Mm -hmm. I know baths are really powerful. They release heat shock proteins, which help your immune system, for example, and that will help my body to repair. Um, so there's just simple tips that we do every day that make a difference. Sure, and you can always add some magnesium salts in that too. Yes, thank uh, you for that tip. I love my magnesium salts. <laughs> Uh, can you mention a little bit more about the herbal, herbal remedies? Um, um, you mentioned um, red clover, um, mm. someone, Marjorie's mentioned um, clary sage. I haven't heard mm. that before. Mm. Um, I know sometimes too that uh, they could, um, they present as different qualities and different doses and um, mm. uh, buy it over the counter. And I think- Yeah, so let me just quickly get one brand, which I think is good in my kitchen cupboard. All right. OK, I think that's the uh, problem with herbal um, remedies, getting the right dose um, to help with um, help with the menopausal symptoms. OK, I'm back. Sorry, I'm getting my care. So obviously we're very much we do our supplements, but I think this brand is very good for magnesium. OK, Can you see that that's called um, new nutrition. So. I can get my magnesium in there. And also, if you ever want to buy a supplement, it mm -hmm. should come as a capsule because it's got a pure element. It shouldn't ideally shouldn't be a tablet if you can avoid it. Okay. Unfortunately, for my promensal, which is the red clover, it does come as a tablet. This is the promensal. It looks like this. So this is what I take for my hot flushes. Mm -hmm. And and the reason why I take this is because this is the one that was used in the studies. Again, I'm always looking for the science and it has 200 milligrams of red clover. So I remember trying to, you know, telling a friend to take it and I'm like, it doesn't really work for me. And I looked at what she bought, it only had 60 milligrams. So that's, you know, really trying to understand the difference between all these supplements. So again, with this magnesium, if you look at it, it's got um, 1.4 grams of magnesium, but you can get a magnesium supplement. I was speaking to somebody and they said, oh, it doesn't help for my sleep. 
how much is yours? 200 milligrams. That's like, uh, you know, 10% of the dose. Yeah. So it's really about understanding about your dosages as well that make a difference. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I will mention, I have, we've also developed something called an energy capsule, which has got iron in it. So it's got 60 milligrams of iron together with C and vitamin C, folate, B12 and beetroot. So this is going to be coming out next week onto our um, supplement brand. And again, it's for people who feel that they've even been bleeding very heavily, haven't got much energy, and they're just trying to get their, try not to become anemic. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is the immune one. So people who are suffering with lots of infections and viruses, this has got elderberry in it. Again, scientifically, the only one that's been shown to shorten viral infections, like as influenza and also COVID as well. But we boosted that with vitamin D, vitamin C, uh, I'm sorry, zinc and vitamin C. So all the things that help for immune recovery. So when I was sick last week, I just took a couple of those every day for about three days and then felt better really quickly. Yeah. So the course you mentioned, it, it, it sounds very interesting. Um, mm. Janet wanted to ask, how did she get on the course? If you can just share the information, that information with us. Yes, the course will be, I'm doing an introductory offer, but say to you for calm because Sandra has um, oh, been right. so good. So good. it's going to be £125, which is really quite a, a, a reduced cost. Before, after that, it'll be um, £250 in the next cohort. Um, and if you want to join the course, please email me at Karen at puravita.com. So I'll just write that into the um, website and I'll send you the link. Okay. And yeah. the, the name of your website again, someone just wanted to... Um, so it, the um, general website is right. Be Pura. Mm -hmm. so www.bepura.co.uk. And I'm just going to give you a discount code as well for Khan, if that's okay. okay. So it will give you 10% off. Um, and that will be live by da, 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 by about 12 30 and that will last for the bank holiday weekend if you want to shop on the website okay fantastic so just wrapping up our discussion unfortunately all good things um come to an end um uh, susan wanted to know if you're on medication for other health problems like diabetes oh. and high blood pressure how does that I interact with yeah no yeah. really good so all of these are safe to use of diabetes or blood fantastic. pressure and fat I find I, I manage diabetes in pregnancy. So I find that if my women, I tell them all to take beetroot. So the one that will be really good for diabetes will probably be this one, the glow. And even if you search online, you know, don't, you know, obviously I'm here a doctor telling you, but even if you put in beetroot and diabetes, you'll see it will come up everywhere scientifically because we know it makes a big difference. Um, and then for blood pressure again, it actually lowers your blood pressure. I didn't actually mention that as well, beetroot as well. Um, because it's got high nitrate so you know like the gtn that we would give people if they came in and other doctors on the call yeah. in a and e it's very high and, and reduces the blood pressure in that way as well mm -hmm. so for those of us who are predisposed to blood pressure it's a good one to take okay fantastic um sort of a daily um beetroot supplement as well okay so um unfortunately we have to wrap up uh, um mr Rush. is there are there any closing remarks you'd like to give us before um we leave um no just to say um the promotional code somebody's asked is khan 10 so you mm -hmm. should be able to get that and use that but i will um uh, make that live by 12 30. okay yeah. and suzanne or natasha will put that code in the chat group um so everyone can uh, see it um and i suppose the only thing i'll ex ex um, explain about the men thrive program it's not just a series of webinars Okay. So we were doing the webinar, we'll be really delving deep and then we'll be giving you some tools to work with. So I see it as though we're learning together, it will become an individualized program of health for you. So it's helping to help you reset your next stage of life. Mm -hmm. And then you, as I said, you have an opportunity to have a um, sort of a one, one to discuss things like your blood pressure. Um, and also we will develop a workbook to go alongside that too. Okay, fantastic. So thank you again so much for that wealth of information. We are so fortunate to have you. Um, I, and I am fortunate to hear uh, this discussion. And, I'm, and I think you also mentioned you have a program for doctors. So I will yes. be in touch about that. Fantastic. <laughs> right. So I'll hand over to um, Annabelle now to um, close our session this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Dr.
Patrice. Um, you've been a wonderful host and oh, you've done you. a great job. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Karen. And um, it's been an interesting and informative um, session I personally have gained from it. And I'm sure a lot of people have also benefited from the session. Thank you so, so much. Okay. And for everyone that has joined, we say thank you for joining. And um, um, just before we leave, we have um, interesting events and activities here in Cannes that you can as well benefit from. And I'll be going through some of these um, events and activities. So next week, being the 3rd of June, we have another Cathy Pelt Hour session. Um, we'll be talking about um, um, this will happen at the same time, 11 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. And um, for you to register, you can send an email to events at can.org.uk. We also have our healthy heart, which has to do with our diet and physical activities. And um, we'll be talking about men's health, especially on that day. And um, we have our guest speaker as Alista Kumi. And um, Dr. Robert Paribo will be hosting the session. And this will be on Tuesday, the 30th of May, from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Yes, yeah, just for you to also know that you're not alone during the tough times and difficult times. Khan is also here to support you. And that is why we have um, our advocacy services. And this runs every day from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And if you need support, give us a call on 077-10022-382 or send an email to advocacy at khan.org.uk. We also have um, the Bereavement Fair Support Group um, providing counseling services, um, free counseling services for you know, 10 weeks, and that started on the 9th of March, and we run through to the 17th of July, 2023. And if you want to also benefit from this, you can send an email to rosaline at can.org.uk or to help at can.org.uk or give us a call on 077-1002282. We also have um, our physical activities and well-being club. It's free. And um, we have two different locations where this happens every week. And that's on Mondays and on Wednesdays, one at Gym in Oldham and the other one at uh, Mossside um, Leisure Center between 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And on Mondays, it's between 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. For more information, please call Orlando on 7464-317635. Or you can as well send us an email on portal at can.org.uk. Yes, another event is really, really exciting to talk about Windrush 75. It's going to be an incredible event coming up on the 25th of, 24th of June, 2023 at um, Alexandra Park. And we are looking forward to see everyone there on that stage. Come with your friends and family members. And for more information, please um, send an email to windrush75 at calm.org.uk. Yes, we want to say thank you to our partners and that's Caribbean and African Health Network. And Enfield Caribbean Association. We have um, the RAFA International Development Agency. We have the Royal Assembly within Christian Church of God. And we have the Paradon BME Forum and Black Health Initiative. Thank you so much, everyone who um, joined the session. We are grateful that you were part of it and I'm sure you benefited from it. And we look forward to another wonderful session next week. And remember not to come alone, invite your family members and your friends to also benefit from the sessions. 
Thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye. Welcome to our Caribbean and African Targeted Health Improvement Program, CAFIP Health Hour. The Caribbean and African Health Network, CAN, along with its national partners, are incredibly pleased to continue to bring to you targeted health and well-being education delivered by Caribbean and African doctors. These health hours are all about empowering, educating and giving space to black people so our communities can look after themselves better. Every Saturday, our black GPs or consultants present on those health and well-being topics that affect you, your family members and friends. Some weeks will vary and will include other panel members such as pharmacists, specialist nurses and faith leaders. Our health hours cover a range of topics and include mental health, heart health, women's health, reproductive and sexual health issues, men's health, respiratory problems, cancer, sickle cell and many more. We have not forgotten to include within our health hours the many societal, cultural, religious and racial challenges that can go hand in hand with health problems and influence how we should respond to meet health and well-being needs. The sessions are designed for you and we want you to use the time to listen, learn, share your experiences and ask questions to our black doctors. During every session we will gather your feedback so we can continue to respond to the needs of our black community. To request any particular topic, please email health at khan.org.uk. We encourage you to invite others to our Health Hour sessions. Spread the word in our community. CATHIP is funded by the National Lottery Community Fund. <laughs>